Hi everyone, welcome back to All Up In Your Business. I'm business and branding attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Lockho in Colorado. And today I'm gonna to tell you why that LLC or DBA that you recently filed is doing pretty much nothing to protect your business or brand name. And I'm also gonna tell you the one thing that you can actually do to really secure and protect your business name. Before we get into why your LLC or DBA isn't doing much to protect your business name, if you're new to All Up In Your Business, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell button so you get notified anytime I post a new video. You can also check the description for links to additional information and resources, including a link to download my free Brandish DIY trademark guide. That is available in the description as well. All right, so let's talk about why your LLC or your DBA or your trade name registration really isn't doing much to protect your business or your brand name. It's important to remember what an LLC, DBA, trade name, what these things are and what filing paperwork for them means. When you form an LLC, when you file paperwork with the Secretary of State to form your LLC, that's what that's doing you're forming a business entity, an LLC. When you file a DBA or a trade name registration, again, you're not forming an entity, but you're registering your DBA with your state. I'll tell you, if I had a nickel for every conversation I've had where I'm like, well, do you want to talk about you know, protecting or securing your business name? And the person on the other end of the call or the phone says, oh, well, I've already formed my LLC, so that's taken care of. Ooh, if I had a, if I had a nickel or a dime, whatever I said, for every time that's happened, I would have a lot. I probably wouldn't have to make these videos anymore. Uh, I mean, it's still, but it's fun. But anyway, this is such a common misconception that people have that forming an LLC or registering a DBA or a trade name is going to protect your business name. Literally all it's doing, the best you're going to get out of it is that it might prevent someone from registering that exact same name in that same state. The Secretary of State's offices of different states they're not talking to each other. They're not cross-referencing their records. Say, hey, California, we've, we've got this paperwork pending. Can we check with New York first to make sure this name's available? That's not happening. They're focusing just on what's registered in that state. And even the slightest variations in some states, some states will allow a name for an LLC or a DBA to be registered even with slight variations. So if your business name is 180 Lawco LLC and someone registers 180 Lawco comma LLC, that might be enough to have both names registered because that comma might be different enough that the Secretary of State's office will accept it. And same kind of idea with a DBA or a trade name. Even the slightest variation of that name will likely allow two names that are still essentially identical to be registered. So what can you actually do to really protect and secure your business name? Of course, this probably won't come as a surprise to many of you if you watched my videos before. It's with a trademark registration, a federal trademark registration through the United States Patent and Trademark Office or the USPTO. Remember how I said that you could register an LLC even if it's pretty much identical to the name of another LLC that's registered in that state, you might just have to make a slight variation. That's not how it works with trademark. With trademark registration and trademark law, the principle that we go off of for the most part is likelihood of confusion. So if I've got a trademark registered for 180 Lawco, which I do by the way, someone else, another lawyer, wouldn't be able to go register a trademark for 180 Law. Because even though they're missing the co, mine has co at the end, that's still the two marks that they're used for similar services, legal services, attorney services, that's still going to be considered confusingly similar because the marks are still very similar in themselves. The, the fact that one has co and the other doesn't 
hardly makes a difference at all. And if the goods and services are identical or closely related, that 180 loss application is going to get rejected because it's confusingly similar to my 180 law co trademark. And by getting a federal trademark registration, you are getting exclusive rights to use that trademark in the United States in connection with the goods and services that you indicate on your trademark application or the goods and services on the registration. You are, for the most part, the only person in the US or the only business who can use that trademark or anything confusingly similar to it. Now, again, if you're wondering, oh, trademark, how is that different from a trade name or a DBA? I'm gonna tell you, but I'm also gonna remind you to check the link in the description to download my free Brandish DIY trademark guide because it's gonna give so much more explanation about what a trademark is and how they work. A trade name or a DBA or a fictitious name, something that we file with the state, typically the Secretary of State, that's not the same as a trademark. Not, not, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say not the same. A trademark is a mark that's used in trade. So typically a business name, a business logo. Your DBA or your trade name can be a trademark if you're using it as a trademark. But registering the DBA or the trade name isn't the same as registering a trademark. The DBA or trade name really is essentially just a nickname for your business. If you're operating as a sole proprietorship under a trade name or DBA, that's the, the nickname that you're operating as a sole proprietor. If you're operating under an LLC, but your LLC is doing business under a different name than what it's registered as, then that DBA or trade name is a nickname basically for your LLC. And any of those things, the LLC name, the DBA or trade name, your sole proprietorship business name, those things can be trademarks as well if you're using them in trade in your business, and then they can be registered as trademarks with the USPTO so you get that federal protection and really secure that brand name for yourself. Of course, there are also state level trademark registrations. Each state also allows you to register a trademark at the state level, typically in a similar way that you would form an LLC or file for a DBA or a trade name. The paperwork is usually somewhat similar to those forms. But a state level registration is not going to give you the same kind of protection throughout the United States that you'll get from that federal registration with the USPTO. For the most part, all you're getting with a state level registration is kind of confirmation of your common law rights in that trademark. So rights that you might already have just by virtue of using it as a trademark, we call these common law trademarks or common law rights. Registering your trademark with the state is kind of uh, affirming and confirming those common law rights. But those rights are going to be pretty limited geographically, so you really only have rights where you've actually used the trademark, and it's going to be a bit different and more difficult to enforce compared to a federal trademark registration. If you're unsure if you should do one or the other or both, a state level registration or a federal trademark registration, I usually only suggest doing the state level registration if you can't get the federal for some reason. Maybe you're in an industry that isn't federally lawful. Let's say you work in the cannabis industry. Recreational use of marijuana is legal in many states, but it's still not legal federally. And so the USPTO won't register federal trademarks that are related to cannabis or marijuana use with a, a few slight exceptions. But those trademarks aren't eligible for registration because the products, the goods, aren't lawfully permitted under federal law. So if you were in Colorado operating a marijuana dispensary, that's an instance where I would say, okay, let's do the state level registration because that's better than nothing. We can't get the federal, at least we can do the state. Or if your business is solely a local business that only serves your local community or your city or or a small geographic scope. In order to get federal trademark registration, we have to be using the trademark in commerce. And in commerce essentially means 
over state lines in interstate commerce. And so if you haven't been using your trademark in interstate commerce, or if you have no plans to use your trademark in interstate commerce, you're gonna stick just locally serving your local area, then a state level registration is gonna be more appropriate there because you can't get the federal registration without that interstate commerce. But either way, whether we're talking federal trademark registration with the USPTO or a state registration with your state, they're both still dramatically, drastically different from registering an LLC or a DBA or a trade name. The trademark registration, whether it's state or federal, is really the only way that you can adequately secure and protect your business or your brand name. Without it, all you're really doing is securing that exact name that you're using in that state. So if you're ready to start protecting your business name now, the way you can do that is by filing a trademark application at the USPTO website, USPTO.gov. Of course, since I'm a trademark lawyer, I'm always going to recommend that you at least consult with, but better yet, work with a trademark lawyer to get that trademark registration because the process is not easy. Even though the application on its face kind of looks pretty straightforward, the USPTO has a lot of great resources too to help you figure out how these things work. But even with all of that, it is still wildly complicated in some instances. And even in the easiest, most straightforward trademark applications, there are very often issues that come up or ways that you can easily screw up your application and we can't always go back and fix things after we've submitted the application. Of course, the best thing to do is work with a trademark attorney. That's all for this episode, folks. If you learned a thing or two, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, click the little notification bell, and check the link in the description to download my free Brandish DIY trademark guide. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham, and I'll see you next time.